Welcome back to The Breakfast here on PLOS TV Africa. Our first major conversation this morning is uh, talking of uh, consumer protection and uh, it's, uh, the Federal Competition and Consumer Protection Commission says the commission received the highest consumer-related complaints from the electricity, banking and telecommunication sectors in 2020. The executive vice chairman of the FCCPC, Babatunde Irukera, said telecommunic telecommunication complaints were third on the chart, followed by aviation. In January 2021, the Nigerian Electricity Regulatory Commission, NERC, hiked electricity tariffs. But there was some confusion as to why this happened until they clarified that only bands A, B, C, D, and E have been adjusted by 2 to 4 naira per kilowatt hour to reflect what they said was the partial impact of inflation and movement in foreign exchange rates. Nonetheless, Nigerians are still complaining of the increasing cost of power in Nigeria. We were joined this morning by Mr. Afolabi Akirugunde, uh, an investment manager, all on Partnerships for Energy Access. Thank you so much. Good morning to you, sir. Good morning. Pleasure being here. All right. I'm going to start by asking for those who completely have never heard about the FCCPC, um, what exactly they do um, and, you know, what, what the relevance of that agency really is. Let's start, let's start there. Okay, well, the FCCPC um, basically set up to protect the interests of consumers in Nigeria. Um, this, is, um, this was a development that uh, was created more or less to align with the trend in many other parts of the world where, where it is believed that there is a need to ensure that um, consumers, users of various products and services are actually, are, are actually protected in terms of the quality of the products and services that, 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 they, that, they, that, they, that they use. So, so, so this entity was set up by the federal government to ensure that, that protection are put in place. And they're saying now that when they took stock of 2020 about complaints they received in the commission. Electricity complaints was the worst, followed by telecommunications and aviation. Does this surprise you in any way? Not, uh, not at all, not at all. 2020 was, uh, was a very, very difficult year, generally, across board. Um, we had five big collapses. We had um, um, this of, we, we had uh, most importantly also COVID-19 which resulted in lower demand and ability to pay for power and to pay for general services across board, which also resulted in lowering of, of revenues coming into the various um, power, power entities along the, along the value chain. Not a surprise at all, of course. And then we also had, of course, as a, as a resultant effect of this, the federal government not having revenues from oil and from other sources, taxation and water bill, to actually pushing the cost which, have been, which it has been pushing in for the, for the power sector. And of course, having to allow cost reflective tariffs come into place. And then, of course, this, of course, when you add that to the barrage of challenges which the average Nigerian has been going through, people have lost jobs, people have had all sorts of, of challenges as a result of COVID and other macroeconomic challenges. Of course, this would, this would make sure that, um, that, that, that the average Nigerian felt extremely pressured. Okay, so, so this was expected, you know, I mean, looking at what uh, the income level is, the level of um, employment, the COVID-19, some of the factors you already mentioned, um, this level of complaints was definitely was expected by the FCCPC. Um, I'm going to ask you, how do you think Nigerians could balance it all out, you know, seeing that uh, the moves, or maybe I don't know if you would agree, the moves by the government to cushion the effects of COVID-19 and cushion the effects on the economy may not really be, um, um, you know, getting to citizens themselves. So uh, what do you think or where do you think there needs to be a balance here? Well, I think the, the core thing is going to be, have to be for people to start knowing how to use, how to use power. Uh, to become a lot more, a, a, lot, a, lot, a lot more sensitive in terms of how they, how, how, how they utilize power. Um, cut down on, on how you, you use your, your, your kilowatts, don't leave the lights on, know how to, because for example, when you travel abroad or you stay with your relatives abroad, you know how people really, really manage to use all those elements. Um, and then another key thing is also, of course, a lot of the challenges you see come from, um, come from crazy fields, estimated metering. So, there continues to be a need for as much as people can to ensure that you get your own meter. Uh, the government has done quite a bit to facilitate this, there's all, but there's a, there's a clock in that chain. So I think there's, so, so I, 
there are a few things which each individual can do, but at the end of the day, you will still need to have a lot of government government intervention to ensure. Currently, right now, the minimum level of, of metering we are supposed to have for users in Nigeria is about 40 percent. We are well below that that level. I think we can get to that level this year. So, so one to I'm sure not. I don't have those figures, but at least um, about 50, 60 percent of those of those of those numbers of complaints probably come from crazy bills and crazy and and an estimated meeting. So if you can roll out meters in, in, into the into the power sector, it would be a lot easier for people to actually know what they are using and to actually then 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 manage themselves proper, properly in terms of what I mentioned earlier. All right. I, I want you to really harp on the importance for to, to properly manage power, you know, power consumption management. Because I've heard experts, you know, talk about this, saying it's the way we use power. We're very irresponsible in the way we use power. You leave the house and you leave all the lights on and they, they mention all of these factors. So I want you to really expatiate on this for the benefit of the general public. Yes, I think um, each, each of us needs to really sit down and look at power power really as a product. You know, you, you, I think the general, in general, the average Nigerian looks at power almost like a social good. Uh, we, we don't look at it as a product. You know, if you if you buy soap, you, you, you buy detergents, you buy, you have a phone, you don't just leave it lying back. You actually know how you manage it to ensure that you get the best value, the best utility out of that product. But the core issue remains that at the, at the individual level, of course, Nigeria has very, very low per capita power access numbers. But the key thing remains that we so need to also manage the little power we have a lot more effective. And that means if your freezer is cold, it's very, very cold, put it off, let it let, let it cook for, 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 for maybe if you've got maybe 12 hours a day, you can you can put it off for, for like three or four hours, that saves you money. Use use energy any energy conserving equipment. You can also if you if, if you do those numbers right also look at the, the possibility of you know solar if you can afford it. So so and there are also even even in terms of solar, there are various other sizes of solar equipment that can be used to ensure that your total overall power cost goes down as a, as, as a whole. You can use energy saving bulbs, uh, which which use about a fifth less energy than the normal 60 watt bulbs you, you, that, 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 are, that are available, even though they are cheaper, they cost a lot more because we have to change those bulbs five to seven times more often than an energy energy saving bulb. So there are various things you can do at the individual level to, to ensure that um, that we manage power um, op optimally. Um, but of course, the key thing at the end of the day, apart from the individual responsibility, there is then the, the general macro government responsibility to ensure that number one, meters are provided, number two, the rules of the road are actually applied and applied um, vigorously to, 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 the, to, the, to the operators in the, in the sector. Or it, it may not be very easy to convince Nigerians to save power or to um, watch their usage when they are still on estimated billing. Um, and I'm, I'm sure that's why, you know, you're pushing for um, uh, prepaid meters to, of course, get to as many people as possible. Because um, a lot of Nigerians who live on estimated billing cannot suddenly start to understand um, how they need to watch their, their consumption. Um, and so, what do you think, you know, is the likelihood that we can move more, you know, maybe, maybe a lot faster into getting prepaid meters to many more Nigerians? Well, the, the metering rollout um, um, process is, is, is on. There are, there are a number of, um, of clocks in that process. Um, I think those clocks continue to be, to be worked out. Uh, there is progress. However, the challenge is that the progress is not quite as um, as much as uh, uh, as players like us would, would have would, would would really appreciate. So, so the, there is a need to also work, um, uh, of course, in conjunction with the various entities in the in the in the power value space, especially the discos, because the discos are the, are the ones who are actually at the core phase, who are the ones who are directly interfacing with the power users. Every other person along the value chain doesn't see. The, the final user. So there is a lot of there is a need, and I think there is there is a there, there is also a need to also manage expectations. But also, of course, if there are any disputes who are not who are not applying, who are not who, who are not who, who are not adhering to the rules of the road, I think NET should start to actually wield the big stick. I, I think we, we have a lot of talking happening in this space. I think NET also needs to start being shown to 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 to, 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 to actually know. Um, put out the yellow card 
or the, or the red card to, to some of the players in this space and ensure that they actually do what they are promised to do. And if they don't do it, the appropriate measures should, should be taken against them. So I think um, people feel that, 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 that the government is not on their side. And I think one thing that the government can actually do by the nerves to start, to start wielding the big stick and start letting people know that they are being hurt. All right. In 2020, uh, we heard about the National Mass Metering Program, where the federal government says they were giving out about 6 million, distributed 6 million free meters to Nigeria. But on the other hand, when you try to get meters from your power companies, you hear different amounts for different locations. Some people say, uh, I mean, when you, when you go to their website, you see that you have to pay for the meters for 38,000. Others say for three-phase meter, you have to pay 70,000. But I want us to talk about the institutional issue here regarding metering. Is this supposed to be free or is it free at the moment? Or are power generating companies, are they selling it? Also, I want us to talk about the corruption in metering in Nigeria. Because I've heard from people who say they tried to get meters, they couldn't get meters, and the person in charge asked them to bring about 60,000, this, this and so amount, and they were able to, you know, quick hasten up the process and give them the meters. So why is this not a national thing where everybody can get easy access or free access to meters in any case? And why do we have to cut corners and resort to corruption just so we can get stable power supply? Yes, I think at the end of the day, the, the issue remains regulation. Um, I think if, um, um, in, my, in my part of the country, they say when, when there is no law or punishment, then there is no crime. I think we need to actually start having the, the big stick wielded against that, against players in this space, and, and, and start having examples made, made, made of people. Yes, um, a lot of these initiatives have been brought up by the federal government, very, very commendable initiatives. However, you also have another challenge also, because a lot of these discourse also are, 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 are highly geared, highly leveraged. They, 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 they do not have the kind of resources, the kind of capital required to actually deploy as needed within their, within their various operational areas. So, so the challenge remains that the, the power sector continues to, to suffer from this. But, but I think it's going to be a mix of the two. The federal government continues to, to provide the support needed. But I think between the federal government activities, there is also need to be the net actually forcing some of these entities actually you know, providing, actually making fines known, actually making people, 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 people are actually win from, 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 from the actions we, which are taken. So I think um, in terms of enforcement, the NEC needs to do a lot more. The NEC has done a lot in the last few years in, in, terms, of, um, in, in terms of managing managing the power sector and also being one of the most innovative, um, creating one of the most innovative regulatory policy, for, for policy arrangements within, within Africa as a whole. But, but, but in terms of enforcement, I think that is one, 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 one weak point where, 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 where examples need, need to be made in the sector. And of course, that will of course ginger a lot of the current operators up and let them do and, and make them do, do what needs to be done. But of course, that's also within the context that a lot of these discos are approved, just to use a simple word. A lot of them are actually approved. A lot of them are living the fingers to have the capital that needs to be deployed into that sector is not hasn't been deployed and, and they cannot attract capital with the current macroeconomic situation and of course with the way the books of the various discos are looking at the moment. So, so it's pretty much a chicken, a chicken and a situation where, where, where these people have their own issues. But of course, that cannot be an excuse for them to continue operating the way they are. They, they have to be forced, in my view, to either shape up or shape out. And, and that, needs to be, that, that point needs to be made very, very clearly to, 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 to the various players in the sector. Yeah, and, and of course, it's the um, NERC, the FCC, PC and the likes, you know, that should um, put out a strong message to these discos yeah. uh, because you know it, I, I know I've also heard of them complain that they don't even make enough money to pay back for power that they um, they, they you know take from the um, uh, you know um, power generation companies. Um, but let's you know with the time that we have, let's quickly move to talking also other sectors. Telecommunications also have received a high level of complaints. Banking also. Um, how much power does the FCC PC have? to enforce um, you know, change or to ensure that consumers get the best out of these telecommunication companies and also from banking, the banking sector? I think the, 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 the FCCPs, 
FCCPC um, 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 role is more or less it is one that, that, that has two, 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 two segments. One, one is to work directly um, in, 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 terms of, in, in terms of pretty much, in quote, harassing the various service providers to ensure that they do, they do what is in their charter of, of service to, to the final user. And the second is also to work with the various entities which actually regulate some of these things. So, so, for example, for telecoms, there is the, there is the, the NCC, the Nigerian Com Communications Com uh, Commission. In, in banking, there is the CPN. Uh, in food and drugs, there is, there is now that. So, so, so I think um, the FCCPC's role is actually to work in conjunction with, with, with those entities, bring to their notice some of the, some of the players which are not uh, working in line with the, with the, with the mandate which, which they receive, in, in line with the regulatory approvals which they receive from, from the various regulatory entities, and, and, and apply this up. To, to the various regulatory bodies so that appropriate sanctions can be taken, appropriate advice can be given, appropriate regulatory uh, policies can be, uh, actions can, can, can be taken on them or, or, or against them. So, so, so in terms of what can be done, number one is to actually remember um, some of these, these entities, let them know that yes, somebody is watching, you need to, to get, you, you need to get your, 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 your business in order. And secondly, also flag some of these so some of these issues with the various entities which regulate these various places. For example, we've been talking before now of the space. So, so needing to, of course, also think to next um, next, next next understanding that this, these are the trends we are seeing. We are the people who are the full face of this of of a, of a consumer interface in Nigeria. These are the issues we are seeing. These are the general trends. These are the things that for Nigerians are complaining about, so that the next can then take. All of that information on board, and then use that to improve the the, the, the sector as a whole. All right. Uh, still talking about electricity tariffs. This is really a pain for many Nigerians. When you go on social media, you see lots of videos and tweets of people complaining. Even in my neighborhood, where I hear my neighbors complaining about the high cost of electricity. Even staff here, colleagues here, talk about just how much they have to pay for electricity. And one of them even told me just this morning that when she did her calculations, the cost of power, what she pays for NEPA, so to speak, is more expensive than, her, than what she has to pay for rents in a month. I mean, look at how terrible that is. But I wanted to ask you, can power be cheaper and should it be cheaper than what it is right now in Nigeria? That's a, that's a difficult question. I think, think the challenge with Nigeria is that, um, is, that, is that everything that is used in our power sector is important, except the human being. Everything else comes from abroad. It's either from China, the US, or Europe. So, 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 so the cost in this sector are actually denominated in U.S. pretty much. But the challenge is that the tariffs are in Naira. And of course, we know the macroeconomic challenges Nigeria has been going through in terms of, in terms of, um, in terms of the value of the Naira, the inflation, inflation is extremely high. I think it is about 16.5% um, in December or so. So, 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 so that, that is the reality of where we are. Even if, even if, this, even if it costs no, 10, one, let's, 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 let's have an example, 50 cents to generate one, one, one kilowatt hour of power. The, fact, the main fact that that, that, that that 50 cents in 2010 was about, was, was about 10 now, and just as an example, and that same 50 cents by 2021 is now, is now, is now hitting, hitting 20 now. That shows you that there is a, there is a disconnect. And that is the challenge we, we are having. We as a country need to actually fix the microeconomic challenge, stabilize our economy so that it becomes a lot easier for players in the sector to, to actually plan. So that is the challenge that, 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 that we are seeing as a whole. I think at the individual level, as I've said, once we remove the crazy military, people can actually manage themselves. And I think that reality, that reality is coming on board. So whether you sit down and say, okay, I think I can have, you no, know, and I think people need to sit down and with their pens and pencils or, or even computers and calculate. So how much am I spending? How much is, how much am I generating with, with, with the data of petrol, the data of diesel? How many hours of power do I have? What can I optimize? You know, how can I buy the best, best, best equipment? If you can't afford it, then there are smaller systems, solar home systems you can use, which, 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 which cost you three, four, five, six thousand and naira 
I can charge small equipment, put on lights in your small, in your small um, self-contained flight or, or small room, you know, char char charge your phones and stuff. And then, of course, if you live in a bigger apartment, you can then afford to have a small inverter, put, put that in place, probably locate with maybe, for maybe one or two neighbors, and then ensure that, that you have power to But right. the challenge really, at the, end, at the end of the day, is that, is, is that it's, it, you cannot have cheaper power. Hmm. Okay. Thank you very much, Mr. Akinrungude. There's just so much takeaways from your from, from your speech so far. And you, you talked about solar power. It's so interesting to note that just last year, the federal government was talking about the Solar Power Niger projects. But we hear of these things just a few weeks. And that's, that's, all, that's all we hear or see of them. But really, though, there are solutions. We can localize power generation. We can invest in solar power. I mean, Africa, we're blessed with our weather. We're blessed with the sun. These are things we can really leverage on to turn our situation around. And thanks again for your time on The Breakfast. Thanks for having me. All right, absolutely. Um, we'll take a short break when we come back. We're now talking COVID-19, NDDC, the Interim Management Committee, and of course, the reactions from the Senate developing story uh, that we will be sharing here with you uh, coming up next here on The Breakfast.